Hello folks, y'all come on in. I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking and today we're going to turn some twig pots. Let me just give you some examples of exactly what we're going to do and, and some of the other shapes and designs that I do as well, okay? So a twig pot is just something simple like this that you can put uh, artificial flowers in, twigs, little branches, anything to decorate the house with. And if you'll notice on this one, I left some bark on it, and I typically do. This is one design I do. Here's yet another one. And you'll notice the other one had a satin finish on it. This one has more of a polished or shiny glossy finish on it. Again, just a little different look. Again, I just kind of leave a little bit of the bark on so that uh, just gives it an interesting look and no two are ever the same because no two limbs are ever the same. Now the one we're going to be doing today is going to be something like this. Let's go ahead and take that out. And this shape tends to uh, be very popular at the craft shows and art fairs that I do. Uh, my family and friends seem to like it. So I decided to share this one with you guys today. And this is basically what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll give you guys an overhead view right there real quick. And what we're going to do to start with is we're just going to round this over. And again, this is made out of a simple limb. So don't have a lot of uh, money tied up in material. So give yourself plenty of room for that spout there. Again. It's, uh, it's a whole lot easier to take it off than it is to add it later. And so that gives us plenty of room to come back from there. Once we've got that front sort of shaped like we want it, then we need to come back and decide how tall is this going to be. So let's just go ahead and say, we'll call that our base there, okay? And then we're just going to kind of come through here and start taking off material. And getting that basic shape. Okay, let's stop it so you guys can kind of see where we're at and what we're doing. Again, we're just bringing this down. We know we want this smaller. We want the neck there. Now, what we want to do is we want to connect these two. And I like for there to at least be one break in the bark. Okay, that's just, just the design I like. So, we're going to go ahead and come in here. Again, just kind of blending. And rounding this over. We don't want any flat sides there. So let's turn it off and take one more look at it. 
Again, see we've got a good shape on this side. I think I want to come down just a little bit more in here. We've got a little bit of a line there. We want to get rid of that. So let's go ahead and come in just a little bit more. Let's take a look at that and see what you guys think. Okay, so we've uh, we've got a large area with no bark. We've got an area of bark, an area of bark. I'm liking the looks of that. So let's go ahead and define our spout just a little bit. And for that, we'll go ahead and pick up a spindle gouge. And basically what we're going to end up there with is just a bead. So let's... Let's just kind of come in. We want to define that line there. And then we want to define that bead. And we're going to flatten that out going across there. Again, get that bevel contact. If you don't have good bevel contact, it will run back on you, folks. Again, let's look and see what we've got there. I'm liking that. I think we probably need to take this down just a little bit down here. So we're going to go ahead and bring that down just a little bit more. And we'll give ourselves room to part it off there. Again, if you'll roll that bottom over just a little bit, Then when you come in with the parting tool, you don't have such a sharp edge. So, we'll go ahead and start our part. Again, when you're doing the part, you want to angle that in just a little bit so that you have a concave bottom there. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this. And folks, really, we're to the point where I want to go ahead and do a little bit of sanding on this. I'm going to start with 150, go to 220, and then I'll hit it with just a little bit of 320, and we should have a nice, smooth surface to work with. And with the green wood, you're going to go through sandpaper pretty quick. The Abronet works a little bit better, but uh, you'll still, it'll plug it up pretty quick with the green wood. So with that said, I'll be right back after sanding. Okay, we're sanding up to uh, 320. So let's go ahead and take this opportunity to back the tail stock out. And we'll go ahead and knock this nub off.
Again, without the tailstock, you hear the vibration, so we're not taking near as uh, aggressive a cut. Okay, let's pause that just a moment. So our next step is we're going to drill this out. We'll start with a quarter inch drill bit. And then we'll move up to a three eighths. Let's go ahead and before we start the drilling process, Let's just come in, switch over here so you get a better view of what we're doing here. We're just going to come in and give ourselves a little bit of a bevel there. Okay, that does a couple of things, but the... The one thing it does is it gives us a real nice place to start that drill bit. I've got a little screwdriver handle looking thing here that holds a hex bit. And I went and bought some drill bits that have the hex fitting on them. So the nice thing about that is now I've got a handle that will take any size drill bit and we'll just run this quarter inch up there. One of the things that's a good idea is to look and see how far you can go up before you go through the bottom. I pretty much knew that with this one that the uh, twig pot is taller than the, uh, than the drill bit is long. So you can see we're going to go ahead and bottom that out. And I'll take the quarter inch bit out and put a 3 8 bit in. Okay. Now, I don't recommend going too fast with the 3 8 It can get a little catchy with you. So let's go ahead and start that knowing that once it catches, it's going to self-feed. Again, let's double check our depth. And that's just about perfect, so good deal there. Now, now that we've got that done, we're going to go ahead and swing this back around. And what I want to do is I want to just take the spindle gouge and scrape that out just a little bit, giving myself a little bit of a funnel effect going into that twig pot. Okay. So that will give you a good look at what we've got. It just makes it easier to uh, to get stuff in there. And I think it makes it look a little bit better too. Speaking of looks, there's one more thing we can do. Go ahead and switch over to the upper camera. This is uh, two dowels with a piece of guitar string in the middle. I use it for burning uh, the wood. And I'm going to put a ring right around here. Let me show you guys exactly what I do there. We'll go ahead and start it. And all I'm going to do is take, and don't use your fingers. Make sure you get some dowels if you're going to do this. Just pull it right down there. You'll see it start to smoke. And you know you got a nice black ring. Again, it's just another little accent. Make it look just a little bit nicer. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and part it off. We'll slow the lathe down just a little bit. We don't need it running quite that fast to do a parting job. 
and So folks, that's what it, that's the way I turn a twig pot. And you'll notice the bark. Got a big section on one side, a little spot on the other. Like I said, every single one is different. They're a lot of fun. As you can see, they're really fast to turn. People love them, so it's something you can do really quick. They make great gifts. If you're doing craft shows, they make something nice to add to your show. And uh, I hope you got something out of it. I hope you guys go into your shops and make some. And again, my goals are to entertain you, educate you, and motivate you. And if I have done that, then uh, give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and share it with others, okay? So with that said, thank you for watching and have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.